Welcome back, Zorka fans, to the April 2020 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're in round two of this tournament. We're going to be starting off with Izaride versus Dabakep. Dabakep, who you may remember as Cubay from a few years back, has come back into the game, and I'm pretty sure is as much of a troll as ever. So, we are going to be seeing how they fare. I mean, they are a little out of practice. They used to be the top, like, in top three, the players in the game. But they are going to be a bit rusty, so I imagine that will factor in. Anyhow, we are just getting started. We will be on random crags, which, as the name suggests, is random. It is a randomly generated map where you have a random height map. that is generated along the lines of being craggy. And it's pretty cool that way. I mean, you have usually a reasonably well-made map, honestly. This is probably the most finicky I've seen it build a map. They are also radially symmetric. That is another thing to point out. Vizride looks to be going for spiders, and Davikep is going for rovers. Well, it's not shields, but Arvion is almost right. Although, admittedly, that was for the last map, not for this one. Alright, so Davikep is going very quickly for a couple of masons, which on a map this large is not a bad idea. Spiders coming in. I can see the launch air for going for spiders. I'm not sure I entirely agree with their use just because spiders, well, they are, they're a unit, or they're a, a unit. Spiders are a unit. Yep, it's the, it's the flea factory. No, 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 I mean, it's, actually, it's more like the, it's not really a monoculture factory. Is I guess recluse is, I guess if there's a monoculture unit in spiders. Well, anyway, Dab kept going for the... Oh, yeah, the new Guardian Commander, which has drones. That's another thing that's been patched in recently. Basically, a patch... There was a patch, I think... I think it was 1.8.3 that added a bunch of things to different commanders. And the most dramatic one is Guardian Commanders getting the drone. The rest of them just got small... Just got buffs here and there for what they could do. I mean, people are still using Recon Com a lot because it can jump. But, eh... Build power, speed, the sort of thing got adjusted for the others. So, with that, Davikep able to defend from the fleas reasonably well, allowing them to expand quite quickly. Not have to worry too much about getting wrecked by errant fleas. Although, they might be getting a little overconfident. There are no plans for any kind of defensive structures near these outward... Near these, not even outward expansions. I mean, they're very close to the main base, but... There's nothing. The drone is about it, and that drone's kind of out of position. In fact, I don't think that commander's close enough for radar. No, it's not! The commander is not close enough for radar. Has no idea. Still, there are scorches coming in, but this metal extractor's dead. Even with the extra health, that metal extractor's going to die, and his ride. They are playing. They're playing really sneaky. And again, Dabakep was Cubay. Dabakep used to play everything very wonky and, and like the weirdest strategy ideas. Always is something new. It was really cool to watch. I just expect because they are a bit rusty, they might not be going for that. I mean, again, they are going for a bit of an atypical commander choice. But at this point, Izzeride seems to be the one going for the sneakier build, the sneakier plays. It's sneakier builds. Oh, Flying Finn is pointing on the chat that Guardian isn't a bad pick if you read spiders from your opponent, and that's a fair point. Not sure if this is what Dab read, though admittedly, random crags being what it is, spiders aren't a bad idea. Again, they're kind of an iffy idea because of the size of the map, but then again, the terrain elevation changes in the map. That does justify spiders to some degree. I still think you'd probably be okay with rovers. I still think Dabicus made a pretty good choice when it comes to factory. 
And I think that Izurai is going to have a bit of trouble going forward because of the size of the map. And because the map is mostly flat. Like, yeah, it's not the flattest, but it's reasonably flat. So, Dabakep now managing to get quite a bit of harassment on Izurai, and there's not much nearby to stop it. And again, this... This Scorcher can get out of there as soon as it needs to, but it's not going to! Just barely. The Redback kills it, and it was a little bit close to the Metal Extractor during the death, so the Death Explosion killed it as well. Same time, Izurai well prepared for these rovers coming along and not really managing to do all that much. But if Dabaka plays this well... I mean, the commander's dead, but Scorch is coming in here, dealing a bit of extra damage. Dabaka's commander really providing most of the hurt. While Scorch is coming into flank, Izurai forced to jump their commander away as the Scorchers start chasing it down. And they will be able to tear it to pieces. That jump is gone. Izurai loses their commander. Dabaka... Taking out the rest of the expansion, and wouldn't you know it, they have a constructor right here. And they've got thousands of metal worth of reclaim. Well, okay, maybe not thousands. They have a thousand metal worth of reclaim. That's still quite effective. And they have the, uh, the masons in the main base. They could start building up. Setting up caretakers, or just... Yeah, there's the caretaker. So yes, they were just assist the factory directly. But no, Dab could be opting for caretakers instead. In return, Izurai coming around the top side of the map with Venom Red back, and it's going to have some success. Be able to get rid of a couple of metal extractors, get rid of a couple of fencers. But those fencers are just not going to be dealt with quickly enough. Izurai wisely retreating rather than sacrificing those units for nothing. And at this point, it's going to have to start making up for lost territory. I mean, Dabkip now has control over this plus four metal extractor. Izurad still having the plus four to the north, and no real threats to that are forthcoming. Dabakep, however, has claimed that southern plus four, and has a reasonably strong economy leading up to it. So I don't see this being a major challenge. The problem, of course, is whether or not this reckless redback combo is going to be able to tear it apart, and I think it will. Dabakep right now, only with their commander for defense, upgrading the commander to add on... Oh no, that's not upgrading, sorry, that's just the drone build. That is not an upgrade at all. They're not upgrading their commander. Maybe they should have. One of the redbacks, however, goes down. Fencers are on the way. Whether or not they're here in time is going to depend entirely on Dabakup's commander micro. Which looks to be fine. They're managing... Actually, it's not really much micro. They just kind of walked away enough that the reckless shots are more likely to miss, which they mostly did. But Dabakup isn't... Are they even going for defense? I don't think so. No, Dab kept going straight for offense. Trying to pressure Izurai to pull their forces back, and that is going to work. Izurai choosing to retreat instead. Dab kept, however, does lose that metal extractor. But in the meantime, they have gained a lot of reclaim. They're still maintaining the metal extractors they had previously. And defending with these fencers over in the main base, just to make sure that this Venom Redback combo does not actually do anything. However, Izurite responding to the fencers with thug or with hermits rather, and I agree with that response. That is a smart response. Just tanks out those fencers and allows everything else to get in. May not be enough though. The scorches come in to support the fencers, and I like that. That will be able to tear apart the hermits, and with that, Dabakev once again maintains that upper hand. So Dabakev. They have 37 metal per second, 27 without reclaim, compared to Izzeride 17. They have, or at least had a relatively solid grasp of the map. They're losing a few metal extractors here and there. And again, that center is, or that plus four rather, not in the center, the south side, is being damaged. But Dabakep, they're maintaining that reclaim, and it's doing a fine job keeping them in this match. And on top of that, their attrition is amazing. 2,000, or 1,500 metal advantage. Now, wiping out basically Izzeride's only real fire base here. Fully defending against that Venom Redback. I mean, the Venom Redback is dead, I believe. So, with that, there's not a whole lot that stops Dabakep from basically expanding across the entire eastern side of the map. And that means Izzeride is gonna be in trouble. Dabakep forced to retreat away from that plus four metal extractor to the south. Looks like they don't really care, though. They got the reclaim, or they got a bunch of the reclaim. Not actually, wait, how much reclaim did they get? 
I feel like they didn't get that much reclaim when you actually look at the numbers. Yeah, they got 200 metal worth of the reclaim in that field, so uh, it's not that great. I mean, it's still something, and they got the plus four metal extractor and maintain a metal advantage for a while. And turn that into a bunch of fencers, which, if they get rid of the thugs, will be able to just wreck face with everything else, and it looks like that's exactly what they're doing, getting rid of the recklesses and redbacks, more importantly, and that opens up that plus four to the south. That means Dabakep can easily expand over here, easily get all this reclaim, basically take that side of the map, although the northern plus four has been reclaimed by Izzer Ride, so Dabakep can't quite take that, but I don't think they care about that. They just seem to care about getting in, making sure Izzer Ride can never really build up anything, and maintaining their own units in the process, keeping their attrition high. Because again, 2,000 metal advantage on units alone, on top of the fact that Dabakep has had consistently a metal production or metal advantage and a production advantage on account of, you know, using all the metal they have, not accessing. So it's really a matter of time, and Dabakep, I think this is the time. And so does Dabakep, it looks like. Fencers coming into the main base, only a couple of hermits ready to deal with them. The Redbacks are not the option of choice. Please going around the back, trying to find some weak point. Able to get rid of one of the Masons, or two of the Masons, actually, over to the north. So that opens up in the north, but it's too little too late. Izzeride doesn't have much to defend against this. We're going to get rid of the Fencers, and they are going to be destroyed, but at great cost. Now the Redback goes down. One last Fencer is up, but... Okay, the Fencers go down. Dabakep remains 2,000 metal ahead. They remain ahead when it comes to their economy overall. The only thing they haven't really done is rebuild a bunch of the metal extractors they had previously. But even then, they have the plus four. They're getting some of the plus twos that they had that were destroyed. They're getting rid of the fleas that are trying to harass, so that's no longer relevant. And these fencers have cut off any reinforcements over to the plus four in the north, so Izzeride, they just have this one lotus. That is the only thing keeping that, thing, keeping that metal extractor to the north safe. And I don't expect that to last. So with Dabakep's pressure, Izzeride is heavily on the back foot, and I do not see an easy way for them to get out of this. I mean, maybe Mass Flea against the Fencer. That's the only thing I could really think of. That would work reasonably well, too. But I don't see Mass Flea coming out here. It's still Mass Hermit, which, again, not a bad choice. Hermits do a good job against the Fencers as well. It's just, you get a critical mass, you get a couple Scorchers. I mean, it's... Like it's at this point, we're actually pretty close to a critical mass of fencers where, yeah, hermits deal with them, but at great cost. Because hermits, I mean, hermits are actually even more, about expensive. I mean, 140 to 160. Actually, yeah, hermits are more expensive. So it's not even a cost-effective counter. And it looks like Izzeride going to get there, and that's it. That is Dabakep taking the map. And Google Frog in the chat pointing out that this is, tends to be Cloakie Rover, and yeah, that's uh, why I was surprised about spiders. I think there's a different random map that is more likely to produce a spider-friendly configuration, but Random Crags is not it. Anyhow, that was... That match it looks like that might have been one of the only ones that has actually been completed. So let's see what else we can find. Oh, wait, no, just, they haven't reported them yet. I don't know, 400 dime find, for just steel blue. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if this randoms the same map every time. Well, at any rate, I want to see... I think... Pro Existence Steel Blue. That was my second pick before. So let's see what's going on with that. Now, just as a fair warning, there will be a loading texture thing on the map for about a minute or so. Just because it is having to randomly generate the texture. or Not randomly, it's procedurally generate the texture. Takes a little while to load that up. And the game will not wait. Yeah, I'm a little curious how good Exist is. I feel like they're quite strong, but their rating doesn't reflect that.
Yeah, Quang Pin pointing out in the chat that they were trying to make a Team 16x16 16 16 version of random map gen. And couldn't make it interesting, which is... Which I find interesting. Because random map gen, like random crags and whatever else, that often produces really cool maps. Like, it often produces maps that are actually pretty well balanced and fun to play on. And actually, at this point, speaking of well balanced, Steel Blue and Pro exist. Already started their match. Five minutes in, not actually managing to really get an advantage one way or the other. Looks like we have Cloakie coming in for Exist and Steel Blue going for Cloakie as well. A lot of glaives along the side of the map. Exist managing to wipe out a lot of Steel Blue's economy, and this could completely turn this around. Steel Blue, how are you managing? Going around the back, trying to get some Reavers around the back, not managing to do all that much. Getting some damage in, getting a lot of destroyed by Locusts. Same time over to the western side of the map, we do have Locusts being torn apart by Ronin and Steel Blue able to use that to get themselves back into this match, but Exist, Exist with a massive advantage when it comes to their economy. Steel Blue holding hard to take the center, and actually this is, rather coincidentally, this is a configuration that would be quite helpful for Spiders, as you can see a lot of sheer cliffs over the center of the map and quite a few sheer cliffs across the map. So hey, it's a configuration that works well for spiders. Both players are playing Cloaky. So yeah. Very pretty though, actually. That worked this this looks really nice. I like this particular configuration. Maybe a little bit steep in the center, but man, it looks really cool. Anyhow, exist. Most of their economy from before was reclaimed. So at this point, static economy-wise, the players are relatively close to even. We have imps coming along here, getting ready, and I don't know if exist saw them and no, they did not. But splash damage off the off the metal extractor does reveal the imp. Nice micro from exist. Or sorry, nice micro from steel blue to get that imp out of the way. Unfortunately, one of the other imps was triggered by an errant Ronin missile, so or errant Ronin rocket. So that is going to be a Steel Blue throws in the towel, realizing they cannot get rid of this force with the use of imps. And that is going to be it for this game. But not it for me looking at the map, because this looks cool! I, oops, not, not that so much. That, that looks like a bug. But this looks really cool. I always like that this is set up with the big hill in the middle. Yeah. That's a cool hill. Let's get a good look at that. Oh, because this had gone for a missile silo, too. Oh, that's... I think this looks cool. Anyway, I think that is going to be it for round two. So we will be moving on to round three. Once that gets sorted out, looks like we have... Maybe one other game that's running? Hard to tell. Oh, yeah, if we're running a dime for him, might just need finishing up. Mm, I don't think I have time to check that, honestly. 17 minutes of catch-up. Yeah. So I'm going to just go to a break. And then we'll be back with round three once that is up. So stay tuned.